Welcome to Electron Line, and continuing with thermodynamics, we're going to take a closer look how ice, ice skating acts upon ice. Remember that ice expands or water expands upon freezing, and the reason why it does so is because in this is kind of a simplified picture, uh, assuming that we have three water molecules here, we have uh, oxygen, two hydrogens for each water molecule, and notice how when water freezes, the molecules no longer roll over one another and it allows these what we call hydrogen bonds to form that pushes the molecules apart and creates these holes within uh, the, the water molecule structure, the, the crystalline structure, uh, then becoming ice, of course. And for us to then melt the ice, we have to compress the ice and under tremendous pressure and we're going to identify to see how much pressure is required and whether or not ice skates because ice skates are built in a particular way notice that normally we think of ice skate blades being flat at the bottom but they really are not they kind of have a hollow shape to them so that there's two sharp edges one on the left side one on the right side of the blade and so the amount of contact between the blades of the ice skate and the ice is, is much thinner, therefore much greater pressures build up. And we're trying to figure out if the pressure of the uh, blades of the, on the uh, ice skates on the ice can actually melt the ice. So starting out, we have the bulk modulus of the ice. And what that means is that it, uh, the bulk modulus by definition B is expressed in terms of the change or the uh, stress over the strain. I should say stress over the strain and the stress uh, normally is equal to the force per unit area which of course are the uh, units of pressure and you divide that by the change in the volume over the original volume now for um, water and ice the change in the volume is about nine percent uh, so this is equal to the pressure divided by 0 0.09 so the amount of change in the volume is about 9% over the original volume of water. All right, knowing that, that means that the pressure required to melt the ice, to put it back from solid state into liquid state, is equal to the bulk modulus times 0 0.09. All right, so this is equal to 0 0.09 times, and I've written down the bulk modulus. Now notice, the bulk modulus changes by temperature. The colder the ice gets, the greater the bulk modulus. So we're kind of ignoring that little detail. For temperature, somewhere between 0 and minus 20 degrees centigrade, that's a pretty good number. So we have 8.8 uh, .8 times 10 to the minus 9 Pascal, which is Newtons per square meter. And of course, if you multiply that through, uh, let me see, I have a calculator here somewhere. So we have 8.8 uh, .8 .8 times 0 0.09 equals, uh, that would be uh, 0 0.792 times 10 to the, oh, that shouldn't be minus 9, that should be positive 9, uh, to the positive 9 uh, newtons per square meter. All right. So now let's convert that to pounds per square inch because most of us are a little bit more familiar with those units. And so let's go ahead and do that. So we have to convert that uh, from newtons to pounds, and it's roughly um, uh, four point, let's see, we need pounds at the top, we need newtons in the bottom, and uh, one pound is 4.48 newtons approximately. And then we have to convert from uh, square meters to square inches. So we need inches squared at the bottom, meters squared at the top, and of course one, square, one inch is 0 0.0254 meters, and we have to square that, of course, to have the proper uh, change in units. So this is equal to, uh, let's see here. Okay, so that's divided by 4.48 and multiply times 0 0.0254 squared equals, and converting that to engineering units. So that's about 114,000 pounds per square inch. Now, is the weight of a person on ice skates sufficient to melt the ice? Now that we are taking into consideration that ice skates really have these very, very thin edges on the blades. So, if you say that we have a 150 pound person standing on one edge of a blade of one ice skate. All right, so what is the pressure for that? Well, again, pressure is force divided by area. And the force of a 150 pound person, of course, is 150 pounds. And the area would be, of course, 25 centimeters times 0.1 millimeter. We'll convert that to centimeters. So I have a 25 centimeters times 0 0.01 centimeter. 
Okay, that gives us centimeters squared. And of course, then we want to convert that to inches. So we have to have a conversion factor here. So we have um, inches squared at the bottom, centimeters squared at the top, and uh, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So we have to square that because we're converting to square units. All right, so we have 150 pounds divided by 25, divided by 0 0.01, multiplying times 2.54 squared equals and a person ice skating on a single blade of a single ice skate can produce a pressure of 3,870 pounds per square inch which of course is far short from the pressure required to melt the ice with the pressure so what we're finding here is that ice skating um, occurs when of course the skate slides over the ice and the ice appears to be melting but it's not because of the pressure produced by the ice it is so in part, in, in part but the rest of the uh, forces required to melt the ice is the friction forces between the blade and the ice which cause the ice just below the blade to heat up just enough to melt and form a thin layer of ice over which the blade slides and so you can see again, if we take a close look at how ice expands and how much pressure is required to melt the ice, you notice that even the pressure of a thin blade on the ice skate by the, way, uh, ice skate by the weight of a person is not sufficient to overcome the expansion forces of uh, frozen ice. Okay, and there you have it.